Good morning. Did you say get started? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly. Um, so good morning, everybody. And I um, would like to welcome you to this morning's meeting and call the meeting to order. It's now 9.01 a.m. Stephanie, would you please take attendance? Yes, thank you. Um, Adrian Cochran will not be joining us today. Andrea Comer? Present. Ellen McKitterick? Present. Uh, John Scott has not joined us yet. Mike Soltis? Present. And Holly Williams? Present. All right, thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the members of the public and anybody else who is joining us this morning. And our first order of business is um, the review of the September 5th, 2024 minutes. So I'd like to have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Any discussion? Second. Do you need a second? Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Second. Um, any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I will need to abstain. I believe I was not at the last um, committee meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, so the motion carries, and we're going to move on to a review of the budget spending to date. Um, Dave, you're going to walk us through that. Yes, thank you. We'll be going over the financial results for the uh, for the month of August. So with that, I'll share my screen, and we'll get started. All right, we can see your screen, Dave. Thank you, as always, for the confirmation, Stephanie. So for the month of August, our uh, operating results were a loss of $963,000. Uh, that was actually better than budget by $426,000. Uh, as far as revenue, it's not a quarter for the administrative fee, so revenue is relatively low, but our, our fund recovery penalties continue to come in and they came in at $77,000, which was uh, $15,000 greater than what we had budgeted for. In terms of expenses, they were a million forty thousand dollars for the month of August, $411,000 greater than budget. Uh, the expense categories continue to be uh, the typical ones, payroll and related expenses were $680,000. The contact center was over $128,000. Uh, we had our quarterly uh, grievance adjudication expense uh, that we pay to our partners at DOL for the appeals work they do on our behalf. Our outreach expense was $55,000. Uh, and our license expense was $53,000. Uh, we had an annual fee for our Salesforce uh, backup software. Year to date or uh, two months into the fiscal year so far, our expenses are uh, a little under $2 million, uh, $900,000 better than budget. Moving on to bonds. Uh, bonds, we spent $86,000 this month on continued uh, fund recovery development work. That was thirteen thousand over $13,000 better than budget. Uh, that same number uh, also constitutes our year-to-date spending. And so we're $113,000 uh, year-to-date ahead of budget for bond spending so far. Uh, that leaves our remaining bond money at just a little under $2.3 million, and we'll be continuing to uh, utilize that during the rest of the fiscal year uh, for, uh, for more fund recovery work, uh, as well as other projects down the line. Moving on. To our contribution activity, our contribution activity was a negative 40 uh, and a half million dollars. Uh, that was uh, less than budget by uh, $5.3 million. And the biggest driver of that was the benefits paid, 
which was almost $6.9 million uh, greater than we anticipated. We spent uh, just under $42.4 million in benefit payments. Uh, that may look a little high uh, for the month. That's because we reimbursed AFLAC for five weeks instead of four. That happens a few times during the year. The weekly average for that is eight and a half million dollars. So we continue to see that a uh, higher rate of spend for benefits. As we've mentioned in the past, uh, we are monitoring that. And, uh, and uh, uh, even through the month of September, uh, we've been averaging anywhere between 8.3 and $8.5 million weeks. Uh, so, uh, we'll see what uh, the rest of the year holds, and we'll uh, be working with our actuaries uh, for our next quarterly update with them, which uh, you'll see in November, uh, and we'll uh, update a projection for you at that time uh, for any variations from the budget. Uh, as far as other activity for contributions for the month, we did get uh, just under $600,000 of contribution revenue. Uh, that was better than budget. Uh, fund recovery activity of $384,000 uh, was also positive against budget, $157,000. Our investment income for the month was $2.8 million. That was $909,000 better than budget, uh, primarily because of our interest rate that we do have in the stiff account, which is 5.4%. Uh, as some of you might know, uh, the feds uh, lowered their uh, interest rate uh, by 50 basis points. Uh, so that will eventually filter down to uh, the investment rate uh, that we're earning now. So uh, this monthly positive variance uh, that we see uh, will be smaller over time, uh, but we still think it will be positive as we budgeted at uh, 4% uh, for the fiscal year. Uh, and the other thing I'll point out is that uh, our benefit administrative fees are $1.9 million as uh, they have typically been. And so uh, that leaves us with about $187,000 positive budget. Year to date for the two months so far, uh, we are less than budget by about $6.4 million. Uh, again, uh, the lead driver of that is the benefits paid, um, somewhat offset by a positive variance in contribution revenue and investment income. Uh, the fund itself, as of the end of August, had over $604 million in it. And uh, as far as the balance sheet goes, uh, most of that money, of course, was invested in the short-term investment fund, fund $587 million. Our total assets were $629 million, and our liabilities still continue to be the money we owe on bonds payable. Uh, that's a total of $12.8 million, uh, 1.6 of that, which will be paid by the end of the fiscal year. Those are our financial results for the month of August. Does anybody have any questions? I see any. Um, all right, thank you, Dave. And I think you're on deck next to give us an update from, of the audit. Yes, I am. I want to give everybody uh, an update on two audits we have going right now. So the first one is what I like to call our external audit. That is the audit of our fiscal year 2024 financial statements. It's our first with our new auditors, Whittlesey. And uh, they have completed uh, pretty much all of their field work at this time. So most of the audit work is done. Uh, that includes uh, the portion of the audit that I call the IT audit. Uh, where they come and they look at our systems, uh, especially the ones that uh, influence the numbers that go into the financial statements uh, and take a look at those, uh, look at them in terms of uh, controls that are in there to see that the numbers are reported correctly. Uh, so 
Uh, so far, so good. They haven't reported anything in terms of adjusting entries that need to be made. They haven't uh, reported anything in terms of any system issues or anything like that. Uh, as Yogi Berra was fond to say, it ain't over till it's over. So uh, uh, they will be reporting to the Finance Committee next month uh, with their final results. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, so where we are now with the audit is we are in the financial statement preparation. And uh, we have just about finished our draft of the financials, which we will be uh, submitting to Whittlesey. Uh, we should be submitting it to them by the end of today. And uh, then we'll have an almost final draft uh, that we'll be going over. Um, and actually, we'll be uh, providing that to Holly uh, for her to look at and the opportunity um, to meet with the auditors. Although I think you do have a meeting scheduled with them, Holly, if you, if you haven't already. I have. We did have a preliminary meeting. Yep. Okay. All right. So it was their first year. So they want to do a, a meet and greet just to say hi and a, a ask you a, a, a few typical questions. I, I think they're obligated uh, to ask. Yep. Um, the one uh, thing that has come up during the audit uh, that we have had conversations on is an interpretation of uh, what was last year's new gap on, uh, I got to look it up because I never can quite remember what it stands for. It's called SPEDA and it stands for Subscription-Based Information Technology Arrangements. And so I won't do a, a deep dive into it unless anybody here is like a real big fan of GAP or GASB, uh, but basically uh, software has moved mostly to a subscription basis these days. Uh, in the old days, you would buy your software and that was it. Now you subscribe to your software. So the question becomes, even though you have a subscription, uh, are you really in effect owning it? And so last year was the first year uh, it was implemented. We were one of the first for the prior auditors to implement. So now that everybody's had a year under their belts, um, our new auditors are looking at it. And so uh, what happens is, as you might expect, uh, reasonable minds can differ on the same set of circumstances. So they're looking at it and um, – uh, really doing a deep dive to it and asking us if we really think that some of the software we have is applicable under the SPEDA. Uh, some of it, or even most of it, may not be. Uh, we're still looking at it. And so the question usually that follows that is, what is the effect on the financial statements? Uh, from a P&L standpoint, the answer is, uh, not much. Uh, the purpose of the original gap was to put uh, the liability of future obligations of the uh, subscription arrangements on the balance sheet as a liability. Uh, the offset to that is an asset. Um, so and in typical uh, cases, the asset is pretty close to the liability. Uh, so what could happen is that the asset and the liability will both be reduced. Um, that doesn't, and this is strictly like gap-based uh, accounting. Uh, it has nothing to do with our cash-based financials, so there would be no adjustment there. It doesn't affect our ability to pay benefits. It doesn't affect the trust balance, and it doesn't affect the solvency of the trust balance. The only thing it affects uh, is the annual audited financials uh, and the footnotes therein. So the auditors will go into more of that when we finalize everything, uh, which we do expect to be uh, next month. But that's really been the only significant uh, topic so far uh, for the Whittlesey audit. The other audit that we're currently undergoing is what I like to call the internal audit, which is done by the appropriately titled agency, the Auditors of Public Accounts. And that is for fiscal years 2023 and 2022. Uh, so they audit every couple of years and they're uh, usually about a, a year behind uh, 
the financial statement audit. Uh, we're still in the early stages of that. Uh, the APA, uh, Auditors of Public Accounts, they tend more to focus on policies and procedures uh, than the financial statements. So to that end, they've also they've uh, already asked us for some preliminary information, some data, our latest policies, procedures, narratives on those. Uh, their major focus this year will be on benefit payments because fiscal year 2022 was the first year we started making benefit payments. So this is the first year that the APA is looking at that. Um, right now we're in a bit of a pause because uh, we're really focusing on the Whittlesea audit and the APA uh, to their credit does not like to interfere in the day-to-day -day business of the agency they're looking at. So we just asked them for a slight pause uh, while we do the heavy lifting for the Whittlesea audit and then we'll uh, resume with the APA. And so we're gonna regroup with them uh, next month actually. Uh, but again, it's still early with them. We haven't heard uh, any observations from them, uh, but their final report uh, will be issued and we'll certainly uh, let everybody know about that when it happens. Uh, so that's what's going on in audit world right now. Obviously my staff is pretty busy with those and uh, the day-to-day -day operations of the authority, but I'm happy to take any questions at this time regarding uh, either audit. Dave, um, I have a question for you. You sure, mentioned Mike. the APA audit would focus likely on benefit payments. What exactly does that mean? Well, because it's, cause so the last two years that they did, we weren't making any benefit payments at all. So they, fo so they focused on the contributions coming in and all the other policies, the uh, HR policies, personnel policies, and any kind of policy that we have and the procedures associated with it. So since this is the first, so since the first year they're auditing, making benefit payments, they'll be looking at our policies and the procedures and looking at how we make benefit payments are, are we making the payments the way we say we're making them? Are we paying the amount the way uh, our policy says it is? Do we go through the procedure? And uh, of course, does AFLAC go through the procedures that they're supposed to be doing, uh, making the right payment and, and doing it uh, the way we say we're doing it? So that's why, they're, that's why I say they're focusing on it this year because it's their first year doing it. So that's what, that's what their eye is going to be on. All right, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I don't see any. Thank you, Dave, for um, providing us that overview. So we have a short agenda today. Is there any old business? Any new business? All right, so may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, and a second? Second. second. Thank you. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The motion carries and the meeting is now adjourned at 9.19 a.m. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.